This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Good morning, fellow podcast listeners. Oh, let me get this mask off. Hold on a second. Ah, there we go. I, <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, this is Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com, and we are. At Southwest Airlines early in the morning again, and we are about ready to take off soon on our magic carpet off to another magic convention. So join me as we carry along to another convention here this year. This will be my fifth and last one for the year, at least the last one I'm planning to attend, and I don't think there will be any after this that I'll have time for. Um, but we're going to be going out to Charlotte, North Carolina to the Trix convention. That's the tri Cs. T-R-I-C's, so that's tricks. get it? That's the Carolina Close-Up Convention, the three C's. Anyhow, uh, so uh, it is the first time I have attended that, and I have been wanting to go for a long time. Scott Robinson is one who puts this on. Uh, I know Steve Beam and some other guys uh, are regulars, and a lot of my fellow 4F brothers and sisters uh, attend this, and uh, I know this year that Gary Plants is going to be uh, attending, too. I just saw on Facebook where he had posted, and he's winging his way. He left earlier uh, out of Austin, where he had moved from Houston to Austin recently. Anyhow, uh, I say recently. It's been a few years ago. Boy, time flies. And I will be here shortly, too. I'll be flying. See what I did there? Uh, anyhow, so I will be uh, also joined there, as I understand, just a, a lot of uh, really great talent with uh, Henry Evans and Michael Lamar and... Uh, Gosh, Garrett Thomas, Ryan Schultz, or I, I don't know who all else. Just uh, uh, they got a pretty good uh, lineup of people. And speaking of a lineup, I am going to be posting this one after the first full day of activities. It's going to be on Friday night. So I'm sorry if you are looking and listening for something to be dropped on Thursday, uh, yesterday. Uh, maybe yesterday. depends upon when this is going to be let out. But uh, I, there really wasn't too much going on on Thursday. And so I wanted to cover the first full day, really, of activities. Uh, and plus give you a chance to uh, talk to some other people. Here's some of their voices also. We'll be chatting with uh, Charlie Randall uh, here shortly. He's going to be joining me, and he and I are flying out of Houston together. I'm waiting for him to arrive, uh, and so I uh, will be flying with him and rooming with him over the next couple of days. And, of course, while uh, I am waiting, that means it's time to see what's in the old Dunkin' Donut bag here. What did I get? I, this time, got something a little bit different. Oh, I got uh, a uh, chocolate covered filled the very cream filled oh and i got just a, a vanilla um, donut a vanilla icing regular cake donut and a little bit of hot coffee let's see how this is doing yeah it's good coffee <clears throat> get me up i'm going here this morning anyhow uh, charlie should be joining me shortly and i am glad that you are joining me now and we will talk with you in a very short time so for the magic word podcast this is scotty out Well, before we leave the airport, I thought uh, it will get kind of noisy in the airplane. I had a uh, chat with uh, Jeff Copeland uh, recently in the airplane, and it had a little bit of background noise. So I thought, well, we'll try to avoid that here by being in the airport. And I've got my buddy Charlie Randall, who is my traveling uh, companion and my lodging companion. Hey there, Charlie. How are you? Pretty good. How you, Scott? Fantastic. I'm feeling good. Um, I'm going to be going and having a COVID test just to make sure soon. But <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which, this is your first flight, actually. Uh, what, you you ever? Know, almost two years. Yeah, January, Magic. Fest 2020. So yeah, it's not, I haven't flown since then. It was a little weird this morning. There's things, and I haven't driven in traffic in that amount of time. So yeah, driving up here, a little bit of traffic. I'm like, whoa, glad I don't do this every day. I never <laughs> did, but yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Well, now uh, one of the reasons I want to talk with you about this is because I know a lot of people have had some trepidation about going to airports. So going to conventions, they're kind of should I go? Should I not go? I know you held off a couple of times of coming to conventions, and this is the first time that you've come. Now, this of course you're just getting out and you're seeing what it's like in the airport as far as everybody masking up and all that. What's what's your experience so far? What would you recommend to people if they should get out or not yet? Yeah, so far, I mean, yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised here at the airport. You know, everybody's wearing a mask. And there's only a couple of them that use them as chin straps. So, uh, but yeah, everybody seems to be doing a pretty good job. Because this is really where I was worried. More the, air, the airplane, I'm not so much worried. They recirculate that air so often, it's not a big deal. 
it's here in the airport with all these people gathered and, and stuff that I was a, a little concerned. And like I said, this is, I've missed now three conventions that I had registered for. And then just my wife has had some respiratory problems in the past, so she's not real comfortable. So. Sure. So she talked me out of them because I almost did the previous one, but uh, but you know she she prevailed, probably the better thing or whatever and all, especially since we did have a spike around that time. And but numbers seem to be coming down now, so I feel pretty good about that. So we'll see how the convention goes. You know, I would like to have done Magi Fest because they did a great job. I heard yeah, about they were everybody and you, asking and everything. And so. before we even checked in, there were two people checking to see you were, were vaccinated. Or, yeah, vaccinated. Yes, exactly. So yeah, testing all that stuff and all. So yeah, which I think is great. I think that. Right. Unfortunately, it may have to be the way we do it for a little while, but we'll see. So you feel comfortable and kind of recommend other people? Well, of course, we're getting towards the end of the year. Not many more conventions left between now and 22. Yeah, Magic Fest will be the next one in January, so yeah. yeah. Well, so. for the U.S., of course, they're going to be having the session over in England uh, prior to that. Yeah, a couple of weeks before that or yeah. whatever and all. And when is Blackpool? Is that February? Uh, February. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not sure if I would fly overseas just yet, just... Uh, because of all the international part. I know you're going next week, but mm-hmm. but you're getting a test and everything else and yeah. all. So. And, yeah, the fact that they make you have a test and be vaccinated, be vaccinated yeah. I think that's pretty good. So, And they've got to if they want to keep their business and everything and all. So, yeah. Right. Well, now, I was uh, seeing where Gary Plants is uh, flying out, and this was his first Trix convention. This is my first Trix convention. You've been to this oh, before? I've been to all the ones that Scott's put on. Uh, so what is this? Eight, nine, ten. I can't remember now how many it's been. And they're great. This is one of the best conventions. I almost hate to say too much because now everybody want to go. But <laughs> Well, there is a max. There's a limit on it. There is a max because you can only fit so many people there. And it's a smaller hotel and the, the room where we have all the shows and lectures and everything and all. But uh, every year, and you'll see that this year, on Saturday, the lineup Janet, is better Janet, than Janet, most conventions, whole convention. This is just Saturday. And we still got tonight and uh, Friday to go through, too. So And Scott does a good job. He gives them a good amount of time. There's a big break between each one. So, I mean, he spreads them out. We don't even start till 11 o'clock in the morning and then go real late. But, I mean, and there's pl- and everybody's right there. It's a small hotel, so everybody hangs out there. There's nobody going off and disappearing. And mm-hmm. everybody just hangs out right there. And it's a good group. It's a very good group. I've heard that this is known for its sessioning. Yeah, because uh, there will be a lot of that, especially... You know, even as late as it goes, it still goes, you know, people will be out there in the lobby area, in the bar area, lobby area, and they'll just keep going. Yeah. Pretty much, not everybody at the hotel is, is there for this, but a lot of them. I remember a couple years ago, there was like an Almond Brother concert one night, and so those people came in like on the Saturday night to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the next day, it was kind of interesting, right? Those are the magicians, because I know them, but those people, they're definitely here for that concert <laughs> last night. So, yeah. <laughs> So. Um, now, we have a lot of people who are listening to the podcasts of various backgrounds, and I was speaking with someone just this week, and uh, Sarah Krasen, actually, who was a recent guest on the Magic Word, and we were talking about sessioning. I was telling her about this convention. She said, what is your definition of sessioning? And I told her she had a different perception of what that word means. And so for those who are listening, um, what would you do? I'll, I'll tell you mine, but I want to hear your definition. Sessioning, just where people hang out and they show some stuff and everything, and and. I mean, some people think it's this round table thing where everybody shows something because I don't show a lot. I don't know a ton of stuff. I'm not a performer. But usually it's just a bunch of people sitting around, and there'll be at least two or three of them that are really gung ho. You know, they're showing a lot of stuff, and people are trading stuff, and they're showing you stuff and everything and all. And when I say trading, it's not like I give you one, you give me one, but usually, you know, I show you some stuff, and you, maybe you show me some stuff. And teaching. within the group teaching, yeah. I mean, and, somebody, and people will work with you or whatever mm-hmm. and all. Every now and then somebody will say, well, you know, I can't really talk about this. For one thing, it's not mine or something, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was doing a Woody Aragon trick a few years ago. I was like, hey, Woody showed it to me, but he hadn't lectured or printed or anything, so I didn't feel like I could really you know, right. tell people about it and all. But, uh, but stuff like that. And um, uh, Yeah, my, my uh, definition of that is pretty much along the line of where people are sitting around, maybe groups of two, three, six or more, and, and uh, they're kind of someone starts off showing something and then someone else shows something else, right. and they kind of prove their... Um, they're bona fides, if you will, saying this is something that uh, I could do, and so therefore you must be at about this level and you understand, so I feel comfortable teaching you this because you understand like a double lift or whatever it happens to be. And, and people who are just walking at the table and watching, we don't know who they are necessarily nor their level of skill, uh, and so it may be more of just a presentation rather than a teaching and learning kind right. of a thing. On the other hand, there are some people who are just giving a mini lecture at the table, yeah, they, you know. <laughs> I was at a Magi Fest a few years ago, and, and Juan Tamariz 
sat down at a table. And, of oh, course, yeah. he was the only one that did anything because everybody was just standing there watching. Yeah, so, of course, I remember so, that well. Yeah, it wasn't really a real session, but, well, I mean, it was Tom Gagnon's night. another one. Tom Gagnon's another one. Howard Hamburger, yeah. Hamburg, Tom Craven. Those guys all do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, one other thing about the, the sessioning type thing, you know, it's really a close-up thing. Mm-hmm. So if you're a stage person, you know, you're, you're not all going to sit around and do your box illusions or mm-hmm. whatever and all. So that's mm-hmm. not really, I mean, they may sit around and talk about ideas or something or principles or performing styles. And, and that's another thing in session. I've seen people do that where, you know, I like the way you perform that. Why did you choose to say this or that? So it's not exactly. just doing the tricks. Yeah, that's right. I mean, well, I was also, when I was talking with this at length with Sarah, I uh, was saying I remember many nights going until dawn with, with uh, people sitting around the table with Roger Klaus when we were at a TOM convention. And a lot of times we were telling jokes and the cards didn't break right. out until two or three hours into the session, basically. Right. Right. Uh, and uh, there are other people, I'm sure, who have... I, I guess they have sessions, I'm sure, like at uh, Abra Kid, I mean, uh, what am I trying to say, Kid Abra, you know, the things for their kids show shows, types yes, things, okay. or, you know, where they're talking about, well, this is what I do for kids, or here's my psychology of handling them or whatever, so they probably sit around, and I'm sure I say they, I mean, I don't do kid shows, but I'm sure other groups have sessions. You couldn't do up. kid shows. <laughs> you couldn't do well, it. Well, I used to. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Man, well, I, I couldn't. I've oh. done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows, so I, yeah, yeah that's kids in my are past. are tough, you know, yeah. David Kay. You know, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm in awe of David <laughs> Kay because man, kids are yeah. Rough. He's taking it to a different level. That's man, true. Yes. But uh, well, listen, thanks. I'm looking forward to this. Sure. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to have a uh, not so much going on tonight, but it'll be a full day of kind of getting to see people today as we kind of get there because we arrive about five o'clock. We got here it is early in the morning. We got I guess a long layover later, uh, and then uh, once we arrive, then checking in and then tomorrow morning got a full day but just a couple of lectures i think tonight ryan schultz and i forgot somebody ryan, else. Uh, and, and uh kyle littleton yeah. kyle's great kyle started at this convention i mean he was did he? scott scott's he's one of the slight club like, guys no no well i think he came in and did some but he's like scott's uh scott was his mentor and mm-hmm. you know i remember meeting him and he's this shy kid and everything and all and Scott introduces him. Hey, this is the, the kid I'm mentoring or whatever. And he does a few things. He's okay. He's learning. Man, now he's fantastic. I wow. mean, he is really, really good. I've never heard of him, so I'm anxious oh, to see you'll, him. You'll, yeah, you'll like him. He's got okay. some cool stuff. Well, this will be fun. Well, Charlie, thanks very much. Sure. Always good hanging out with you, man. Sure. See you up soon. So with the Magic Word Podcast, that was Charlie Randall. Scotty out. Oh, Charlie Randall of eight, former H&R Magic, by case you wondered. <laughs> that R is for All right, well, we have arrived in where we are. We're in Charlotte, and after a little bit of delay in getting our luggage off of the uh, carousel, finally arrived, and I appreciate uh, Joe Daniels giving us, uh, Charlie and me, a ride in, and uh, one of the people who had responded whenever I'd posted on Facebook that I was going to be coming was Glenn Yost. Yost or Yost? Yost. Yost. Yeah, that's why I say Yost. Is, uh, is the first one of the first people I ran into, and you've been coming for a long time. Hello, Glenn, first of all. <laughs> You've been coming for how many years? Uh, nine to ten, twelve years, something yeah. like that. Pretty good while. And why do you come? Is it because it's convenient, or what do you like about it? Uh, it's a it's a it's a no nonsense type magic convention, but it's more like family. Mm-hmm. And you'll see a lot of the same faces here every year. Uh, generally, a very close knit group, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, you learn a lot. Yeah. Um, one of the big things about this convention is the sessioning in between things and late at night after things. I mean, yeah. it'll go until 3 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and you'll see guys all over the place with coins and cards and yeah. all kind of magic paraphernalia sharing you know, techniques and things. Now, do they host this in the same hotel every year, or is this a new venue? Uh, as long as I've been coming, it's been here. Yeah. yeah. And so they do have some different talent each year that's kind of coming. That uh, uh, Has there been anybody in the past that has been outstanding that you remember that's uh, been influential? Well, Sean Farquhar has been here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Shen Lim was here one year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, lot of big names. Big names, big yeah. Names. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the cool thing is, obviously, because it is an intimate convention, everybody gets to sit down with you and kind of share secrets back and forth. Yeah, you get one-on-one almost absolutely. with them. Yeah. yeah, like at the table here, you got Cosmo and Garrett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're you know, two big ones that are a lot of fun to hang out with yeah. and learn things from. And yeah. I got a, I have a, a story I can tell about Cosmo when you got more time. But he, he, I got uh, a little bit of time right now. He, um... I, I, I sat with him a few years ago telling him the story, how what he did for me. See, I used to play music for a living, and 
I had a hard time with some of the things I was wanting to do, and I met this guy, and he kind of took me under his wing and spent a lot of time with me teaching me some things on the guitar I needed to know. Yeah. And I met Cosmo here one year, and we went out front and sat out in chairs outside, and I told him the story of the guitar player that helped me out so much. And I said, what I've learned from you and you know some of your uh, DVDs and things about street performing absolutely changed my life and set me on a whole different path and made it possible for me to do things that I wasn't able to do before I learned what he taught me. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was life changing. I, I went from being kind of, you know, laid back and shy about getting started to being able to walk out in the middle of Times Square when it was packed with no inhibitions whatsoever and start performing. Yeah. And since since I met him and learned what he's, he's uh, taught me, I mean, I've gone to Florence, Venice, Rome, Barcelona, southern France, and performed in street corners, festivals, wow. courtyards, and um, had a ball. Quite a testimonial. Oh, yeah. It's been great. <laughs> and, I, and I owe it all to cause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kyle, yeah. He's uh, we're at his booth right now, but he's not here right yet. But uh, well, great, Glenn. Thank you very much. But uh, the the local magic club called Slight Club mm-hmm. is who puts this on. Yeah. And it's a very unique magic club. It's no nonsense. It's straight, strict magic. You come in. I need something. Okay. And um, you 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 come in with something to show them, and then they tear you apart. Mm-hmm. in a good way yeah. Yeah. you know they say well why do you do this why do you do that well, let's do it this way let's do it this way that doesn't make any sense drop that put this in and by the time they get finished with you if your feelings aren't hurt too bad you've got a damn good routine to go with yeah and how many people are in slight club oh uh, gosh maybe 15 or 15 or 20 maybe mm-hmm. yeah and i've I haven't been a very good member lately. Yeah. But um, different people rotate in and out, I'm sure. A little bit, but there's there's a there's a hardcore you know group that's been here all along. Yeah. But it's like I said, it's it's not a social club. It's you, you come in to do business. Yeah. And it's great. I heard that was the Slight Club that actually was the general sponsor and when it kind of mm-hmm. got this going then too. Yeah, so. Scott Robinson. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to Scott here shortly. Yeah, I thought he might be in this room, so I was going to catch up with him. He find might out be where... in the big room. I just came the from other... there, so well, I think okay. he might just be running up to his room because we're going to be beginning here just in a few minutes. So he'll be around I think, somewhere. Yeah, I think I'm starting to shut yeah. things down here too. Glenn, thanks very much. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Glenn Yost, Scotty. Yeah. So now we are in the showroom, and the show is about to begin, and we're running into some 4F guys already. And uh, see Mike Powers, and uh, golly, here's sitting next to one of my good buddies and a longtime roommate from way back in Atlanta, Mr. John Miller. Hey there, John. <laughs> hey, Scott. <laughs> so glad to see you. I'm uh, glad you're here. I am so glad to be out and around and uh, seeing people in person. In person. And not on Zoom. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Looking forward to next year at the 4F, by the way, for the 50th, finally. Sorry that Obi wasn't able to make it all the way, but uh, that's going to be... Uh, who's going to be taking that Obi? Have you heard? Is Joan Caesar going to take it over? Have you heard anything? My guess is Joan and probably Glenn Brown. Glenn Brown, probably, yeah. Okay. That's kind I don't. Of, I have no inside information no. on that. Well, I know that uh, your buddy Dan Garrett and ours, my two, of course, is a... The, um, I see some ID, uh, please. On the board of directors uh, for that, but uh, and I know you talk to him on a regular basis, and... I should say begrudging congratulations for the Atlanta Braves having won the North American Series. <laughs> I, I don't say the World Series because it doesn't include the whole world. But <laughs> You're one of the few people besides me who is, talks about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, Braves have a parade tomorrow in Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, and it was amazing because I'm one of those people who labor or uh, all-star break thought the Braves wouldn't even make the postseason. They lost their best player. Yeah. They lost two pitchers. They lost two catchers. They were all not over 500 until after the All Star break. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been coming to this convention? I mean, this is a kind of a southern thing, and not too far from Atlanta. So, how many years you've been coming to? This is probably tricks? my 11th or 12th. Okay. Uh, I came the first time I came. I said, "I'm. This is one I'm coming back to every year." Why? Because it's small, it's intimate, it's friendly, and it's fun, and the talent is good. 
Man, those are all solid combinations. Well, there are, there are actually two conventions I put in this category, and the other one is called Peppa Palooza oh, yeah. in Dallas. Yes, that's a good one. Lance Pierce puts on. I hope yeah. he has that uh, this next year. Well, obviously, I haven't been to this one for a couple of years or yeah. that one for a couple of years. Right, right. Uh, but I'm so happy to get back out. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you, and I'm um, uh, looking forward to this one. This is my first one of these, and that's why I was anxious to kind of talk to some people who have You'll love it. Been Scott, here. Scott Robinson does an amazing job. And, uh, yeah, he's here kind of I, I, trying to corral him, but I don't want to bug him while he's trying to get everything going. Uh, so this is Thursday night, this you know, first activity, and I understand Ryan Schultz was supposed to be here, but from what I understand, they're going to be. Of course, this is kind of, in a way, sponsored by the Slight Club, the local guys. That's so. exactly right. I've learned that in the elevator coming down here. Yeah. The Slight Club is a club, a local close-up magician's club that they meet every week. Yeah. And they criticize each other and try and improve their performances. If uh, people who are listening to this will go back and do a search for the podcast episode I did with uh, Scott Robinson, you can uh, hear him talk more in detail about the Slight Club and how that's going. So that would be one that uh, I would recommend to hear, learn more about Scott. I mean, he's quite a guy, quite a guy. I mean, works for Microsoft and anyhow. Uh, so, John, good to see you. I'm looking forward to uh, this weekend. Me too. Thanks, okay. Scott. You bet. So the Magic Word Podcast. That was John Miller. Scotty out. have just completed the first evening show that was supposed to be with yep. Ryan Schultz. Is that right? Ryan or? Slutz. Ryan Slutz. Yep. Uh, and so he had a family emergency at the last minute, so uh, we had another show that kind of filled in, but it was hosted then by the organizer, and who I've got with me right now I want to talk with is Scott Robinson. Hey, Scott. I We talk a lot, don't we, Scott? We do. It feels like we talk we a lot. Have, yeah. you know, yeah. we, and also, you were on my uh, Magic Martini virtual. Magic Martini. We did a podcast. We did, yeah, we did an episode. And, and I think every program. magic convention. <laughs> there we are. Right. Yeah, we always talk and this is your first time at Tricks. It is. I'm having yeah. a wonderful time. Yeah. You know, it's just I'm seeing a lot of old friends here, a lot of people. I think, like you said before, a lot of 4 efforts who mm-hmm. come to this thing yeah. as well. And I'm anxious, so anxious to, to kind of sit around and session with some guys. You're going to have like, so much fun. You probably yeah. know. And there, there's a good mix of folks our age yep. Yep, and younger you. people. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's really fun here. And yep. you probably saw. So what we can I tell them about what we did? Please do. So uh, just a little bit before <laughs> Ryan was supposed to be here, we found out he wasn't going to be here. So we had to put together a lecture at the last minute. So we decided my local group, Slight Club, we would uh, pick some people from that and, and do some original material we had been working on for, for a while. I did a couple of things from my book, and uh, and then we had Vince Mendoza did this fantastic well, Coins Across. We had all, it was crazy. Well, I, I think it's also cool is that the, the Slight Club is not only the local people, but you've got like international members, yeah, Zoom members. We call them satellite members. Satellite members yeah. yeah, and uh, some of them were there some, him and Lauren Cohen were in it. Lauren was talking about uh, how to... When you don't have all the technical ability that you want to, to someday, how to still do tricks you want to do, right? right? right. Uh, and Vince did that coins across, as I mentioned. We had a couple uh, Foolish folks, yep. John Michael Hinton and, and, yep. and, um, and Brian Saint. I hope he doesn't hear that hesitation I just had. <laughs> what? But, yeah. uh, it was really good. So, yeah. It was really yeah. good. So I thought it turned out really, really well. You know, no, I thought it was. Well, a, I didn't know what to expect, and so yeah. it was great. It was kind of yeah. like magic to me. Yeah, <laughs> it should be. But how good, many good tricks? How many people are we have attending? One hundred sixty-two. And you cut it off at one hundred sixty-two. No. <laughs> so what we do is we cut it off at one hundred twenty for every event because this room that we're in right now, Scott, yeah. we're going to bring in some lay people. Okay. Yeah. People that register late. For the they watch. Show. Yeah, they watch the satellite show out in the restaurant area on the TV on the okay. screen so we never turn anyone away yeah. but that last show sometimes you have to make a little sacrifice if you're slower to uh, it to seems rest like an intimate room. hotel with a nice little uh, lobby for sessioning yeah. over there and everything it, it's the, that's why we stay here mm-hmm. it is perfect people leave here walk outside the door if you guys were here you would see it yeah. right outside the door is a restaurant uh-huh. we have the whole hotel so Do we? okay yeah. what about, what about yeah. the bar how late is the bar open the, the bar opens to about 2 I, I had my from what I understand, yeah. Uh, so, you know, now everybody's going through all the all pandemic, COVID stuff in that. How do you, yeah. uh, other uh, conventions have done this a little bit differently in the past from the standpoint, I mean, like, I just came from, uh, well, you were there too at Magi Fest, which they were requiring everybody yeah. to be vaccinated. What was the situation? How so, do you handle that? And what's the city doing? So my, my focus 
was to follow. I didn't want to think I was smarter than anybody else. So I wanted to do whatever the local mandates were. Okay. Okay? The local mandate right now is if you're in public areas, whatever that means, Mm -hmm. in public areas, you need to wear a mask. Okay. That's it. So that's the mandate. And since this but, is really not public because it's really yeah, a private yeah, hotel, yeah, basically, yeah, of course, for the weekend. Right, basically. Yeah. So, uh, like, you'll notice I wear a mask as I'm walking around yeah. with people, but me and you have spent a lot of time yeah, together. Right. Uh, my mask is off right now. But that's what I decided to do, is if tomorrow they say everybody in a space needs to have vaccination, I'll be asking people for vaccination yeah, yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. But until that, whatever happens, the day, yeah. the local I'll mandate just do is. Do my best. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was wondering about that because I said, you know, everything is a little bit different. I noticed that really no one. Well, I say no one. Few people wearing masks here this yeah. evening. People earlier want to be they were. Again. It was interesting. It was yeah. funny watching them through the night as they got more comfortable around the people they were. Well, the thing is, lots of us are just coming from the airport where we've just been in the airplane, yeah. you know, and at the airport yeah. where we have to wear masks yeah. and everything and at that situation. Now, what about the rest of the, the convention as far as some other uh, any surprises or anything we got coming or is it just kind of the... So the, the other thing that is kind of different that we do, we do something called Steve Beam's Door Jam. Yeah. So you got a little taste of Steve, yeah. right? When he came in. Like yeah, that. yeah. Steve, uh, Steve is my heckler, yeah. right, yeah. during this. So Steve does a thing where, similar to this, we do some tricks, but it's really about giving Steve an opportunity to share his humor with all of us. Okay. So we do that. That's so and we do some, jam, Does he just do comedy, or does he have some no, people kind of do yeah, so I'll I'll do something? Yeah, I'll do a trick. Gary Plants, Plants is going to yeah, do yeah. something, yeah. and he's going to do a few things. Okay. Uh, but it really is just an excuse for him to make fun <laughs> make of fun us. People, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And uh, then we do something called Insights, which I'm really excited about. It's We do it every year. TED Talks, right? They, right. they started doing them at 4F, 4F right? Yeah, yeah. I, I had talked things, to right. Christian and Catalina about what we do here, and yeah. they, they decided to do it at 4F. So it's um, we have Vincent uh, Mendoza doing his talk about the paper rose. Yeah. Oh, wow. We have uh, Tiffany Allen. I'm getting older. Uh, we have Tiffany Allen doing her uh, presentation on the history of the Georgia Wonder Act. Mm-hmm. So we always try to have some Georgia history. Magnet. The Georgia Ma- Magnet. Yeah. What, what did I say? Wonder. Yeah. yeah. We know what we're yeah, talking yeah. about. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, but people who are listening yeah, don't know. Yeah, Georgia yeah, Magnet, yeah. look into it. That's an awesome act. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And, and Tiffany does it really well. Uh, and then we have, who else do we have? Heck. Am I going to remember? Well, that's okay. Yeah. You, you, I mean, it's early on, and you've got so much on your mind. I'm glad I got you for a few minutes just to, yeah. to ask about a few things. So, great. You know, it sounds like it's going to be – it has been. It's going to be cool. Yeah. A lot of people you know, too. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what yeah. I've talked to a couple of people, and they were saying, yeah, it just really is a family kind of a thing. That's why they've been coming yeah. back for the last 12 years. Yeah. It's um, – I'm very lucky. Yeah. yeah. And we got, like, about, what, 12 dealers, I guess, 12 dealers? No. we. Okay. Scott <laughs> forgot that he booked dealers last – two years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I had forgot they were still coming, so I have like 16 or 17 dealers in there. Oh my, okay. Yeah, so that's why we have for the first time More two dealers' that. rooms. Okay. Right. Well, I only saw the one. Where's the yeah, other one? Just keep going down the hall. It's oh, on the okay. left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Another dealer. There's four more dealers in there, including okay. Brent Braun and, and his shop. And yeah, so okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I messed up. <laughs> well, everybody will have some fun. Good. Oh, Scott, I'm looking forward to this. Thanks very much for hosting I hope this. To, let's talk again. Okay. Right. Good enough. Take care. That was Scott Robinson for the Medford Podcast. Uh, and I'm here with uh, my buddy Marvin Leventhal, former editor with Dan Harlan of the Minotaur. How'd that go, by the way? Uh, oh, it, it was How many terrific. Years we, that? we actually did eight years. Mm-hmm. Eight years. Uh, there was about a, I don't know how many year gap between issue three of year eight <laughs> and the final issue, which never came out for the longest time. And then Dan came up with a script for a video for the last one and it, for, the, for the last issue. Uh, if there's any subscribers still listening out there that never got issue uh, four of volume eight, drop me a line at marvloventhal at mac.com. That's my normal email address, and I will send one out to you for free. Now, since we were at Tricks, I want to uh, talk a little bit about last night's show. Yes. That's right, speaking of Tricks. Very um, eclectic set of. What did you think about last evening's shows? I actually enjoyed them. You know, I'm to the point where, due to... uh, Shows and lectures, I guess I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
due to some physical limitations as you get older. <laughs> I don't do a lot of finger flinging or anything like that anymore, but I, I, I found uh, a lot of the uh, tricks that were shown really very interesting. I, I mean, they were kind of uh, unique methods. I mean, some of the stuff... Anytime I see something done that's really difficult, which what was the, what, the second gentleman's name with uh, uh, Kyle Littleton? Yeah, Kyle Littleton. I mean, there's a guy that obviously can do anything with a deck of cards. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Uh, some terrific moves, which he makes look extremely simple, yeah. on, <laughs> which are in fact not. But I was fascinated to see, uh, you know, what he'd come up with. You know, a lot of us during COVID-2 probably watched every movie on Netflix. Oh, yeah. What did I say COVID-2? COVID-19? COVID-19. Uh, I, I, I got my COVID-2 <laughs> shot last week. Uh, your second shot? <laughs> no, I actually got my booster, booster shot, yeah, yes. Me too. Yeah. Um, but uh, he said that was what he did during, uh, during lockdown. <laughs> lockdown. Yeah. And now, some fascinating stuff, really. But you've been coming for a long number of years. This is not your first one, obviously. This is, I think this is my third or fourth. I, Scott Robinson, who is a tremendous host and runs this thing like clockwork. You know, it's all in one room. If you've never been here, I can't recommend it more. I mean, it's like going to Fector's or Close Encounters, but not having to worry about being picked in the audience to have to perform. Yeah, they've already got them pre-selected. Yeah, they got them pre-selected. You don't have to worry about being selected to have to perform. It's about half the number of people of Fector's, too. Yes. I, I do like uh, how cozy this is. I think it's about 150 people is what he restricts it to. And there is a big show the last night I always look forward to because they bring in a... Yeah, the public's allowed to come. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many they have, but uh, I don't know if it's like 30 people yeah. public, but it makes for an even better show because you get legitimate reaction from people in the audience. Not like us ma magicians who, like Kyle Littleton said last night, you know, you might get a cough or a yawn in between <laughs> every trick magician. from magicians. Yeah, yeah so... so uh, it, it, it's it's very uh, friendly. Uh, I know there are a ton of first timers here this time. You know, you talk about friendly, and other people have talked about this being like a family kind of a thing. And I do feel that because when Kyle and other people are performing there yesterday, there are hecklers from the audience. Yes. I mean, it's kind of like you know your brothers or sisters are, exactly. are saying, "Hey, goofball, what are you doing up there?" You and know, or you know, and it's the only ca uh, convention I know with a designated heckler, <laughs> of Steve Beam. Steve Beam. <laughs> I mean, Steve's a riot anyway. He's an yeah, authorized heckler, as a matter of fact. You know, I've, I've heard things like uh, Scott saying, come on, give it to me. And then, yeah. So uh, it is, it is kind of, it, it seems very spontaneous, and to a certain extent a lot of things are. But like I say, Scott's a tremendous host. He's got a tremendous lineup of talent. I don't think you can get the same amount of return on your money at any other convention. The hotel is very nice. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of space in the lobby for people to hang out and kind of, you know, shoot the breeze and stuff. So uh, I'm very fond of this. This is one of my favorite conventions now. Okay. Well, good. Thanks very much, Marv. Always good catching up with you, buddy. All right. It's I'll nice to soon. be on the air somewhere again. <laughs> That's right. It's good to be back together and yeah. with, with seeing live faces. Good. Yeah. So for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Marv Leventhal and Scotty O. So now I am with my friend Dexter Cleveland, perhaps better known as Algonquin McDuff. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm doing great. We don't see each other often enough because you live, you don't live in Spartanburg, actually. I do. You're in Spartanburg, okay, in North Carolina. So Sometimes, just, South Carolina. South Carolina. So how far is that, like three hours from here? It's one hour. Okay. One hour from Charlotte. And this Trix convention is great. Uh, I don't want anybody to find out about it because it's, <laughs> so really it's, it's, it. it's, it's just big enough. It's, it's, it's uh, a just great right regional side. convention, and a, a lot of magicians who are local just uh, uh, sit here and brainstorm and... Uh, convince and, and share things. It's a very open convention. Now, there used to be a thing called SCAM, which was at the South Carolina Area South Magicians. South Carolina Area Magicians. Is that Charles Pacor or what? No, was, that was different. Then, um, it was a, it would moved around from Columbia to Greenville to all over, and then it just kind of went away. 
Okay. But was that a predecessor to this, or does no, this, this have no... Like, totally, in, this, this okay. is the tricks. This, this is, is all something kind of from Slight Club and the Slight Scott Club Robinson. The key, yeah, Scott Robinson is the key to this. And last year at this convention, he unveiled his new book, which is awesome. If you don't have it, you should get it. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott's a very creative guy and innovator, and he's been running this for I don't know how many years, and it just keeps getting better. Uh, and have you been coming since the beginning? Not since the beginning. I think this is my fourth year, and it's just okay. a lot of local guys that I know are here, and it's just a good way to. It's my last convention that I want to go to. The big ones and international things are too big and too far away. I can drive here in an hour, and it's just perfect. Well, the reason you and I had known each other, we had roomed together way back when, back at the 4F convention, back in uh, uh, you and I believe at Red Bryson and, and Glenn Strange. Chick Wagda back yeah, in back was at the right. Forks itself. Back yeah. Was the Forks, yeah. In fact, it was a so you're a close-up guy going way back, and that's why I mentioned Algonquin McDuff, because you had that little book that was something that I think you and Red Bryson had put together. Is that right? We, that the... we did uh, a thing called the Baby Bag Book, which was yeah. funny, and it was kind of a byproduct of this convention. The guy that originated the baby bag was here, and I've forgotten his name right this second, and we took me about two years to, to convince him to let us have this and, and run with it, and we took it. We got Martin Gardner and Charlie Pacor and uh, Frank Herman, a lot of these people are no longer with us, to contribute their ideas, and it was a good little kind of exercise and getting as many people and going in different directions as you can for one specific idea. Yeah. Well, I, I know I, I don't see you very often. The last time I did was actually, I think, at uh, John Mooring's uh, funeral, uh, who was a mutual good friend of ours and good friend of yours. And you'd worked with him, I guess. John and I uh, go back a long time ago, and we, I helped him uh, in an indirect way with some of the book writing that he did. He was the best man in his wedding a long time ago, and we just we went to a lot of conventions together, and he was uh, almost a brother. So. And he, you were the one who put him together with Bill Spooner to cut the Camp of the Del Rey book, because I just learned this morning. We just accidentally, that fell into place just as serendipitously as possible. And um, the, if the Del Rey book is an awesome read, and if you don't have it, get it. Yeah, it is a good book. And uh, yeah, I assume it might be available someplace, if not. Yeah, no? I don't, I don't think so. I don't, yeah, it, if you can find it someplace, it, it is. I have to agree. It's, it's a great read. You can't put it down. Uh, whether you like history or not, if you like magic, I mean, it's all in there. It's a well-written, and John was an excellent editor and writer. Great pictures. Uh, I contributed a couple of things, you know, in there. It was it was it was good. Well, uh, Dex, it's really great to see you. I'm so you know it's so infrequent. Maybe I'll see you again here next okay, year. Okay, huh? Scott, I hope so. And uh, <laughs> keep keep the tricks coming. Thank you very much for the Magic Word Podcast. That was Dexter Cleveland, Scotty. Yeah. So we just finished the newcomer lecture, and it was with Kyle Purnell. And that was the first uh, event of the day, and he was teaching three impromptu things, which were phenomenal, one of which I know I'm going to be doing. So ask me to do this for you when you see me again. I'll have it down by then. Hopefully this uh, dollar bill trick was phenomenal. Uh, but I got with me also someone who is newcomer. Not only that, he's a newcomer as well. Since we just had a newcomer lecture, he's a newcomer to the tricks, just like me, but a newcomer to a convention. It's your very first convention, and he's a longtime listener uh, to the Magic Order Podcast. So I want to introduce uh, Stefan Barksdale. Hey, Stefan. Hello, everyone. <laughs> you got a great voice. Say it again. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I should have you actually do my intros. <laughs> so, uh, why did you decide to come to see you live nearby, or what? Uh, no, I don't even live in North Carolina. I live in uh, Virginia, Virginia Beach. Okay. Um, and uh, Tricks was perhaps the closest and more convenient convention to go to. Uh, it's just a four-hour, five-hour drive from Virginia to here, and uh, it's just my very first magic convention post-pandemic. I planned on going in 2019, mm -hmm. but it never worked out. And then 2020 was the plan, but. 2020. Now, is this, uh, you've been doing magic, I guess, for a long time? Decade, or? yeah. Okay. And uh, do you perform professionally? or uh, Not professionally, kind of a, soon. You're kind, of like, you're kind of like a YouTuber, kind of, a, you do things like on your own, or you post things? Or what? Uh, not a YouTuber. I do perform uh, you know, here and there uh, as a hobby, soon to be professional. I'm trying to get that professional, but I do definitely perform. I definitely well, the reason I'm asking these kind of rather personal questions is because you said you're 21. I mean, I don't talk to a lot of people who are... You know, like almost my grandchild's age. You know, uh, so I, I love uh, you know getting a chance to talk to someone who has such passion like you do to kind of find out your path, I guess, of how that you got here and why that you chose this particular convention as opposed to you know there've been some other ones after the pandemic. Is I mean, there've been this is my fifth convention in the last few months that oh. I've attended. So I mean, they're, they're, my point is they're doing some live conventions, not just Zoom conventions anymore. So why you decide to choose? Was this the closest one, or why? why oh, most definitely the closest one. Uh, okay. You know, usually when it comes to expensive plane flights. 
that's, um, you know, kind of seems out of my reach for me. Not right now, but, uh, you know, it just definitely, Tricks was definitely the most convenient. Uh, just two gas stops, and that's it, yeah. you know. Just, it's also because it's close-up, I guess. Oh, oh 100%. Yeah. I love close-up stuff. Uh-huh. You know, close-up stuff is my thing. Yeah. You know, my main start was in close-up magic, and I just learned the chops from that, and Dude, fell in love with it ever since. And Tricks is the perfect convention for close-up. So do you work restaurants? Have you done restaurants? Or what? Uh, when you are talking about going professional or doing some types of jobs, are you looking to do things like for, uh, not just for yourself or friends, I mean, are you looking to go into bars or to restaurants or cocktail parties or what kind of venues do you oh, want to Oh, play? definitely. I have done some gigs here and there, weddings, walk-arounds, and Good. stuff like that. Um, so I definitely have a little bit of experience. But, yeah, I definitely plan on doing restaurants when it comes to uh, the professional aspect. And obviously some gigs, but a restaurant is definitely where I feel that magic with pretty much be the bread and butter of what I do. It really is. I mean, I can't say enough about that. I know you listen to podcasts. I've had a lot of people who have been restaurant magicians like myself who have worked for many years or decades. And so you, and there are a lot of books out there as well. And I, I've often thought there's not much to say that hasn't already been said in books. And so if you, if you have a few books, uh, Jim Pace has got a great book. Mm. Uh, I remember Charles Green had a great book that mm. was out. There are a few, you know, that are out there. Mm. Kirk, Kirkland, Kirksdale, uh, Scott... I think Scott Kirkland. Kirk, his name? I can't remember. There was a guy, Kirk, somebody had a, another good. Anyhow, there are, are a few books. Mm. But what's been said, I mean, from a theoretical side, has pretty much been said. So I'm definitely. saying you probably have those books. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Dude, books are definitely underrated when it came. When I first started out, I first started out on YouTube and, you know, learning the video side. But once I really got dove deep into the mm-hmm. magic scene, mm-hmm. like, dude, there's so much valuable information that YouTube can't do justice. It's just, yeah. it's just so. I mean, I think YouTube is a definitely a good start. It's definitely a good start, uh, especially in this day and age now. Uh, but, like, when it comes to, like, the value of books, yeah. like, dude, it's immeasurable that YouTube really can't do justice. How close are you to the Washington, D.C. area? Uh, I think about two, three hours. I would really wish you would connect with my good friend Charles Green III. Okay. Do you know Charles by chance? No, I don't know Charles. Okay. Charles uh, is a guy, uh, he's a black man who uh, is successful in trade shows, started out as a restaurant magician doing like 11 restaurants in a, a week in Houston. Uh, yeah, and then he start, used that as a springboard to get some corporate shows and some trade shows, which he then was successful in trade shows. He now lives in Washington, D.C., and he's also well known for uh, collecting magic posters and everything then, too. And so he could be not only a good mentor, but also a good teacher and someone who would be nearby who might have some relatable stories that he can talk to you about personally that I I really wish you guys could connect. He's Mm -hmm. a great, great guy. Charles Green? Charles Green III. In fact, if you go back and listen, he had him on one of my episodes recently. So go just do a research, uh, just do a search for Charles Green. You can find him. And he just, in fact, when we were in Las Vegas, when we went through the... the, um, David Copperfield Museum. He was the one in charge of showing us the poster collections really? of Copperfields. He had that room. I mean, he is he's the guy. I you know. know. He's a great friend. Yeah, I'm definitely so, going to look him up and uh, yeah. listen to that podcast probably when I'm in the shower. And, and if he's listening to this, then you need to reach out and listen to Stefan because I think you've probably got some you got a passion, and that means a lot. And I'm, that's why I really wanted to talk with you for just a moment over mm-hmm. here to kind of see how this is growing and to see at 21. I mean, I, I'm anxious to see you at 31 and 41. To see <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. I've been are. doing this for 10 years straight. I I never get burnt out. And that's a kind of a misnomer, but, I mean, you get burnt out. But it's not for reasons of, you know, too much magic. It's more like too much bad magic. But, yeah. dude, I, I I love it. I just that's 10 great. years straight. It's that's so great. good. It's great to see you here, and I'm glad that you are coming to a convention, and hopefully that you'll be coming to some more as you kind of get uh, Get deeper into uh, this then as well, and uh, I plan on coming back to this convention. Oh, this is 100%. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Definitely next year. Definitely. I'm glad to have made a friend over here, Stefan. Yeah, Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Stefan Barksdale with Scotty Young. So we just finished with the Michael Lamar lecture, and uh, we are getting ready to have a people going out uh, for lunch because we're going to be starting up again here about 3.30, but in the meantime, one of the people uh, who's been coming on a regular basis, and you might remember from 200 episodes ago, I was just reminded <laughs> with Michael Kaminsky. Hey there, Michael. Hey, Scott. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm seeing you all over the place, and I had just posted something about, uh, I didn't know if you were coming because you're going to be at the Magic Castle next week. Is that right? Uh, two weeks. Two next weeks. week, I'm actually going to be in Mexico City, Mexico, so I'm going over there wow. for the Mexico convention, and I'll be performing and lecturing over there and then going to the castle after that. When do you find time to make your cups <laughs> well it's been tough getting raw materials to make the cups and you know even because the supply chain the si- and- supply chain and, and yeah. even uh, the, all the fruit that i you know put together and everything it just i really have a hard time getting things i'm finally just getting back to where 
Um, if you've been following my website, it's MK Cups, but it's been out of a lot of stock, and I'm finally getting to the point where I can replenish that, you know, those materials and, and have some new items out there, too, some things that during the pandemic I got to uh, explore a little bit further and deeper and get into, so I'm that excited. That are still related to cups and balls? Absolutely, or? and some that aren't, so so some that, uh, you know, that are totally, you know, card and coin related and stuff like that, but yeah, a lot of new cups and balls projects. What kind of uh, special things have you got available that are right now that are on your website that you could people could buy that are new? Well, the newest thing that I have is called In the Money, and it's uh, John Allen did a great thing with a, a money clip, basically a card to money clip. I loved it. It came out in like 2017, but I wanted to take it to that next level. So after performing, you know, many times with it and going out, uh, I think I've I think I've hit exactly what I want. The problem is they're a real pain to make, and I hand make each one out of real U.S. currency. Yeah. And uh, the, you know the magnets, and I, it's just a real, it's a it's a real you know tough thing to make. So I only made a hundred, and when they're done, they will not be reproduced because I yeah. Yeah, that's it's just one hassle. of those things that I'm not I'm not going to sit down. I had you know I was laid up with a motorcycle accident. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I just had to swerve to miss a bear, and uh, you know I put my bike down and. I broke my collarbone in two places. I, you know, broke my wrist. I broke two ribs, and so for two months I sat in a chair. So I had a lot of time to do some things. Yeah, so you're lucky to be alive, as I recall. That was a pretty serious accident. Yeah, well, you know, I, I count my blessings, yeah. and and yeah. you know, getting back to being able to come to conventions and tricks here. This is one of my favorite conventions to come to. Is this your first one? Convention out of the shoot since uh, yeah, so, live convention. So the first live convention I've been back to, you know, since you know, yeah. kind of shut down the world in 2020. Yeah. Well, I, I cut you off. I didn't mean to, but talk about tricks as far as this being one of your best conventions. Why? Well, I just enjoy it because it's a, it's a big sessioning convention. You know, people come here. There's a, you know, everybody's, it doesn't matter if you're a professional, if you're an amateur, you're coming in. Everybody loves to share ideas. It's, it's a real family-oriented kind of convention. It's relatively small, a couple hundred people, you know, but, uh, you know, great lectures. Um, you know, the dealer room has expanded, you know, this year quite a bit. We used to only have three or four people here that would come as dealers, and now there's two big dealer rooms, you know, so um, it's come a long way. And, uh, you know, I look forward. I, I lectured here as a newcomer lecture, you know, many years ago, and um, it, it's, a, it's a fun place. You know, it's, it's good to see all the friends and meet some new ones. Yeah, I didn't stay up too late last night. It was a long day yesterday. Were you up sessioning early in the morning? Or? No, I, I, I had a long drive down here. I drove down from, you know, state Pennsylvania yesterday, so it was about eight, nine hours. So, yeah. you know, once once I was done at the end of the day, I, I found a bed. <laughs> That's the way I was after a long day. Even though I was flying, I had it took a long time to get here. But uh, uh, anyhow, I'm probably a, bit, a little bit later tonight as well. So. Uh, I'll definitely be up later yeah. sessioning, so yeah, it'll uh, be fun. Michael, good seeing you, buddy. You too, Scott. Good Take luck care. at uh, Mexico and also at the castle. All right, thank you. You got a whole new show you're going to be doing, by the way, at the castle? Absolutely. Or? i got actually two new acts, and I've got a brand new cups and balls routine that I'm debuting at the castle. So. I want to tell you, by the way, that I've been loving the uh, mini cup. In fact, I did a trade show. Uh, well, I've done a couple of them the last two, couple of weeks, and I did, the one I did last week, I broke that out because it was something that happened to work well for this pitch I was giving and which I was having using your routine with someone holding in their hand and the oh, ball. Fantastic. You know, it's great. So I just want to thank you for making good quality, you know, things that fool people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I make things that I would use, you know, and, you and, and that's the thing. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to use it up, you know, I won't make anything that I wouldn't use myself. So. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate thank it. Take okay, care. that's Michael Kaminskis. Scotty out. Of an afternoon lecture uh, by Ryan Plunkett, I believe it is, is going to be doing this uh, here next. But as I was coming down the elevator, I ran into a, uh, a new friend and uh, someone who is a first-time attendee to any convention again. A little bit older than the last gentleman we talked to. The last one was 21 years old. He's just a few years older than that. Uh, Dwayne, again, short. <laughs> Should be easy to remember. Dwayne Short. Hello, Dwayne. <laughs> Hey, Scott. How are you? Fine, thank you. And thanks for uh, taking a little bit of time to talk about this. And so, uh, of all the years you've been in Magic, this is the first, not just tricks, but first Magic convention even. The first convention ever, yes. Okay, and why has it taken so long for you to to come to the family of Magic conventions? I, I have just, um, I was just unaware that, okay. that we actually had a scene here in Charlotte. You live in Charlotte or in the area? I, I live about an hour away in the west, to the west of Charlotte. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been sitting at home with my books and my videos and right. uh, just plugging away for years and trying to absorb all I can. Right. 
just a real hobbyist, basically. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Kind of entertaining like your family and friends or people at work and that kind of a thing. Exactly. You're the backbone. I mean, <laughs> of a magician's of magic, you know. It is. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's. Uh, I enjoy the thinking. The uh, I've always been a troubleshooter. Yeah. So my questions are always why, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I like to know how things work. What is your full-time career? What do you do? Um, I run the technical end of a dialysis center. Okay. So I troubleshoot, maintain all the equipment, uh, water systems. Okay. Um, well, that makes sense. That's why I was wondering, you know, because you're kind of a, interested in, in puzzles and, you know, troubleshooting and solving problems, and that's kind of what you've done all of your life, and so magic is a natural progression for that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. interesting. Uh, so particularly cards or coins, close-up in general, illusions, mentalism, everything, or what? I love everything. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but but, but mm, lately, car, mostly cards, mentalism, mm-hmm. and I am digging back into the classics. Mm-hmm. Just uh, old stage, parlor, uh, visual. Right, okay. Uh, and as far as attending this convention, how did you find out about tricks? Um, I do not remember. Okay. I, I, I found out about it last year, but yeah, too late. last year it was, wasn't. No, uh, I didn't, had it, one last it year. It didn't happen. Yeah, right. So. so you came then to this one. That's great. And so you plan on coming after just a day and a half we've had here so far. What do you think? Absolutely. This is great. <laughs> well, as close as you are, I, I think so. You know, if I if I had thought to bring my uh, easy to master easy to master series yeah. uh, on VHS tape, mm-hmm. I would have brought it to get it signed but yeah yeah by Mike Lamar yeah, yeah. Mike, right <laughs> yeah, yeah that was a great lecture wasn't it yeah good stuff yeah uh, and so based upon this one will you think about attending other magic conventions absolutely okay. I, I would like to see if I could uh, find, find a group yeah. in the area well they're obviously a slight club which I have here which right. I understand now is Zoom so they have satellite members so it doesn't matter where you live even if you wouldn't have to drive over here all the time that's true that's yeah. true and um I'm not sure how you get involved with that, but I'm sure if you talk to Scott Robinson, you can learn more information. But there are other conventions, obviously. I mean, this specializes, obviously, in close-up, but there are others that are major conventions, like the SAM convention, the IBM. Are you a member of the international organization? I, I am not. Okay. Um, that's that's something that, that, it, that needs to change. Okay. Are you retired? Are you nearing retirement? Or uh, No. Not yet? You're not nearing retirement? No. Okay. no. <laughs> Another... Uh, 10, 12 years. Okay. That's why I wonder. I mean, I retired early. That's why, I mean, I didn't I didn't assume anything. I just, because people retire at different ages. I mean, I, when I was 55 when I retired, you know. Anyway, no. Yeah. I, then you can devote more time to magic. So I was kind of wondering about that. So. Well, good. Well, listen, good talking to you, and congratulations, and I hope to see you then in a future year, too. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I, I, I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Dwayne. So the Magic Word Podcast, that was Dwayne Short, Scotty out. Getting ready to go here. Thanks, Scott. We are about ready to wrap up the uh, second day, I should say the first full day of activities. Yesterday was Thursday, today's Friday, and wrapping this all up. Uh, But also, I've got with me uh, Jonathan Levitt. Hey there, Jonathan. Hey, how are you, Scott? It's good to see you, man. You as well, my friend. And you're going to be on actually tomorrow night. We'll be talking about that here in just a minute. But I thought it'd be interesting first to kind of let people know kind of as a wrap as far as uh, a couple of activities that they've had this afternoon was a thing called Insights. Now, this is the first convention both you and me. Yep. And so I think this is kind of a cool little feature they do, which is like basically a TED Talk type Mm -hmm. of a thing. Can you explain a little bit? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, this is the first time I've been to Trix, and uh, and everybody everybody here says, oh, once you come to Trix, you're going to want to come back. Mm-hmm. And, and they're right. It's yeah. really a fun group. Everybody's really friendly, and it, it's terrific. But but the but what they put on is great. It's all lectures, mm-hmm. and and the show tomorrow night. But insights is that, like you said, that these TED talks, and we had a handful, maybe seven people or so, on the on the insights, starting off with Dan Harlan, and went on from there. Right. Uh, and they're they're so diverse. It's diverse, right? Some of it's magic, some of it's magical, some of it's just magic thinking, some of it's history, and uh, and it's just like TED talks, and they're really and people have put a lot of work and time into constructing a 
uh, a talk, right? So, so a short talk. A, a short talk, right? So uh, we had a talk on the uh, the Georgia Wonder uh, and and the and the history on that. We Dan Harlan talked about constructing a piece of magic by doing a piece of magic and talking about the beginning and the end and the tent poles and the bridge between. And yeah. it was really interesting. And uh, all of them, uh, a lot of work went into them. Very tight. And I'll tell you what. We can learn a lot by uh, by how tight they made and how impactful and packed in they had with content in such a short period of time. You know, that's a very good point because a lot of times we tend to think, okay, well, more is more. Well, that's exactly what it is. You know, sometimes uh, more is less. That's right. You know, but what they manage to do is to compact everything into something that is a tight little bundle that is so full of information it makes you think about what more could have been said. That's but it's being said in the dialogue and a conversation that you might have with somebody else later that kind of inspires you to start thinking about these things. That's exactly right. Rolando Santos, who's talking about uh, his his life and history, but, yeah. but really putting in the context of, of how we, evoc- he, what do you say, evocative. And not uh, provocative. Right, exactly right. And how do you inspire that from an audience? You want to invoke that rather than having be- people being provoked into... Into a reaction, reaction, he said. Yeah. yeah, provoked into a reaction. You don't want that. And he put that into... So- it was so well scripted, you just... Get it right. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Great insights. Very, very, very nice idea. It was very good. I'd forgotten. Prior to that, of course, Michael Lamar had done his lecture, <laughs> which, of course, Michael is Michael, which was just uh, you know another young Di Vernon kind of a guy right. uh, that was talking about cups and balls. And the thing that impressed me the most was the cups and balls with a volunteer. So he had the volunteer actually pick up the cups, and there's the balls and move them around, and it was amazing. It's very cool. What well structured. I, it, well structured, and I had I have never thought of doing it with a volunteer. Had not it nor seen it. Right, no. and so the the and in the uh, the routine was tight, right? Really yeah. tight, yeah. really compressed down, and really great moments of surprise mm-hmm. for the. Uh, person they brought up, right. and as a result, then everybody in the audience was seeing that surprise on the person's face, the spectator's face. Really smart, uh, and you know he's a he's just a, a, a pro. I mean, he just gets yes. up there and just does it, and you just it knocks it out of the park. Lots of great ideas, yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. wrapped up in this evening with Garrett Thomas. Oh my God! Speaking of another young Ty Vernon, uh, that uh, yeah. the, the magical thinking that genius has. So smart. Uh, I mean. Skill beyond, 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 <laughs> right? Beyond, beyond. Even through his explanation, and people oh, go, "No, wow, well, what is happening?" You know, when he's what saying behind this, <laughs> what is happening? And yeah. then his his teaching of it is really smart, and he's thinking about not just the technical, but he's thinking about how to deal with an audience. He's deal, talking about uh, structure. It, all of it is really smart. I mean, to end with Garrett tonight is fantastic. So it's been it's been tremendous. It really was. And right now they've got the pizza party that's yeah. uh, starting. Uh, then as well. And tomorrow, you're going to be lecturing and they're going to be in the show then tomorrow evening. Is that yeah, right? and we should also say Ryan Plunkett tonight. Oh, that's right. Today. right. Ryan, I have to tell you, man, I came away from that so inspired. Uh, Ryan, you, you know, Ryan, if you don't know Ryan, he's an incredibly talented guy, really great thinker. Uh, and he knocked it out of the park today. I mean, I really sat there. He was giving ideas that, to me, were, were new. I mean, new ways of thinking about things. It really inspired me, and uh, I came away. Uh, I'm a fan of Ryan's. Yeah. I came away a much bigger fan of Ryan's today. My too, and I will. I, I, I'm a fan as well, and I've got the first edition of his book. He's now into the third edition about the uh, stripper deck yeah. uh, that he has. And I uh, give everybody a little sneak preview. Uh, he just has agreed to sit down with me, and we're going to do an episode maybe Sunday morning before we leave. So hey, that'll be great. coming up in the future as well. Man, I More you, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, going, I'm getting a chance to work with him uh, in a couple weeks in Chicago. And, uh, Magic Lounge. At the Lounge? At the Lounge. And I always have a good time with, with Ryan. He's a good buddy. Uh, but I just, man, I just loved it today. I have yeah. to say it over and over again. He was great. So it's been a great, great day. And so tomorrow we've got... Uh, We've got more lectures, right? I think who do we have on there? We have uh, we have Dan Harlan's going to give his lecture, which is going to be amazing. And it's so good to see Dan. I, I, I love. I, I love didn't recognize Dan. him. His hair grew out. His hair, his hair grew out. His beard. He looks fantastic. He looks yeah. great. Yeah. And then uh, Steve Beam. And then I'm going to do a lecture. And then Henry Evans is going to do a lecture. And then we have the show. That's a packed day. Full day. day. Yeah. That's a packed day. I am terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. You're closing. Uh, well, You're I'm closing lecture. 
I'm well. No, Henry Evans is going to close. Oh, sorry, Henry. Yeah, that, thank goodness. Uh, but but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a you know I'm seeing all these great guys, and you just go, wow, what do I have to talk about? <laughs> well, uh, you're no stranger. <laughs> uh, no, I guess <laughs> to, we'll talk about that to this, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can talk about that then tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, have a chance to talk a little bit more in detail about some of the exciting things that are be coming up. On yeah, this actually, well. that that's uh, that's growing too. As you know, it's never stopped developing, yeah. and uh, version 4.0 is in development now, and that's that's. Should I say the big one? It's yeah. probably the big one, yeah. and uh, it's it's a big it's a big one. So right. I'm very excited about that. We'll talk about that, and uh, and I'll mention that in the lecture too. I'm excited to give the lecture. I love lecturing. Here's the hard part for me, and something I've had to learn, uh, something I'm I'm trying to uh, adopt from to, from watching the lectures t- from today and yesterday. I said to Michael Lamar today, I said, man, I tell you what, doing a lecture for me in an hour is hard. I usually want two, three, four hours. Right. And he says, yeah, you, you, don't, you, you say hello, it takes you an hour. I go, exactly. Right. So it's a real lesson, something for me to uh, take in and, and uh, adapt to. And so I'm really looking forward to tomorrow having an hour to just pack it in. Well, I've been looking forward to the past day and a half. Yeah. And it has come and gone, and it's met every expectation and exceeded that. And uh, thanks for helping me share those last few moments of what's been happening today with the rest of the listeners here. Thanks. And i got to tell you, it was a, a, a really great surprise to walk in and see you, my old friend, Scott Wells. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. Jonathan, good to see you again. And so, for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Jonathan Levitt. This is Scotty out. And good night, I'll say. Oh, and one more thing I do want to uh, add, and that is I wanted to welcome Andy Lackey as a new friend of the Magic Word. And I say that because <laughs> he had surprised me and bringing me a donut, saying, hey, I know that you like chocolate, chocolate donuts, and here's something from Dunkin' Donuts. He brought me some donuts and also <laughs> a gift card uh, for Dunkin' Donuts because he's a uh, listener and has been for a long time and knows that I like him whenever I'm coming to conventions. So that was great. So thank you, Andy. And he is now officially a friend of the Magic Magic Word, and you can be too. All you need to do is go to the Magic Word Podcast.com, and there you can find out how that you can help support us with your financial obligations, either through a donation or through a regular monthly pledge. And that would be really appreciated. So, this way we can help support our, our costs that are ongoing with all of our domain charges and everything else. So, just a last tag there as we sign up here for this evening. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming back from week to week and listen to this, and come back again tomorrow when I will be posting another. Uh, wrap up actually and hooked in talks uh, with different people throughout the day for the second and final I should say third and final day of tricks here in Charlotte North Carolina until then that was Jonathan Levitt and this is Scotty out